The sometimes fatal collision of man and wildfires has been described by one writer as a colossal blow up. Well, the latest blow up came this time in Arizona, where fueled by record heat, a fire claimed 19 members of an elite crew overtaken by shifting flames. ABC's David Wright is on the front line tonight where the fire is still raging out of control. The 4th of July is fast approaching, but the flags today in Prescott, Arizona, hung from the chain link fence of the firefighters' parking lot. The closest thing to a parade, a somber caravan carrying bodies out of the blaze. Members of an elite Arizona firefighting crew known as the Granite Mountain Hotshots, who perished this weekend in the Yarnell Hill fire. I just can't even imagine how the families and the friends that knew these individuals feel. It just is... Um, Unbearable. You know, our thoughts and prayers go out to the families of uh, the brave firefighters who were out there. Uh, this is one more reminder of the fact that uh, our first responders, they put their lives on the line every single day. The Granite Mountain hotshots are the firefighting elite, the SEAL Team 6 of the fire lines. These young men, seen here in a training video, were trained to go to the hottest spot of the wildfires and tame them by brute force. These people keep themselves in exceptional condition. Uh, they have uh, considerable weight to carry and they can walk miles to get into strategic locations. Oftentimes they'll sleep on the ground. Tonight, we learned all of their names, their next of kin having now absorbed the terrible news. The average age, just 27. Young men like Kevin Wojcik, whose dad is an L.A. fire captain. He's a great kid. Uh, I, I say kid, but he was a young man. He was working very hard. He was an upbeat, loved to be around people, loved to help people. And he was working towards his dream to become a, a Los Angeles County Fire Department. It's a big loss for us today. Wade Parker was engaged to be married this fall. Sean Meisner's wife is pregnant. Andrew Ashcraft has four little kids. Our oldest is struggling a lot. and. Sorry, I just I want them to be like their dad. We have three boys and one girl, and he loved them, and now it's my job for them to know how much he loved them. Tonight, his wife is doing her best to keep strong for their kids. He's the best person I've ever met, and he gave all for his job, and it doesn't even compare to what he gave to his family. So... And they were all like that. They're heroes. The nightmare began Friday evening when lightning ignited the dry brush a mile or so from Yarnell, Arizona, about 90 miles northwest of Phoenix. A perfect storm of brush dry as tinder, high winds, and a heat wave. Triple digit heat. By Saturday, the hot shots were out on the fire lines, trying to block a blaze now threatening 500 homes. By Sunday, the fire consumed at least 2,000 acres, whipped along by winds dramatically evident in this time-lapse footage. What the hotshots clearly didn't expect was a shift in the wind. Suddenly, they found themselves cornered. With no escape, their only hope, the emergency shelters the firefighters have nicknamed shake and bake tents. ABC's Ginger Z explains how they work. David, this is just like the fire shelter that those hot shots would have used inside that fire. I want to show you what it's made of. We cut it open here. You've got fiberglass insulation that is sandwiched by aluminum foil laminated onto cloth. It was their last best hope. A flimsy piece of fabric, just a bit bigger than a sleeping bag. Not much to protect you from the inferno. The firefighters knew that. This is a last ditch effort for firefighters that are on the line. The fire shelter is something that uh, we're highly trained on, um, try not to think too much about them um, because they are a last ditch effort. They knew that like a seat belt in an airplane crash, it's not much protection at all. No matter what they hear, no matter what they see or feel, that they have to make just an absolute commitment to staying with that shelter. 
if, if they want to go home. They can protect you against flames up to 500 degrees, creating a pocket of breathable air. But inside, the temperature soars. Dave Latour survived a different wildfire in a shaken bake. It was like somebody closing a door on the oven. The hotshots had trained with these things countless times. In fact, we see members of last year's hotshot crew training in that video, shot last year by journalist Corey Galvin. And when they did the uh, the drill with the um, the fire shelters, even you know, although the jokes were kind of going, you know, you think it's a drill, but then you just imagine it won't be a drill one day. Never before had the Granite Mountain hotshots deployed their emergency shelters for real. You know, they knew that it was a last resort. You have to exhaust it all other efforts. Last night, when the Prescott Fire Chief learned that they had, his heart sank. Soon afterwards, he had to announce the dreadful news. We're, we're devastated. We just lost 19 of some of the finest people you'll ever meet. Today, on his shield, black tape, a sign of mourning. No, we've never had a fatality. Never a fatality, period. Not, not, not a fire fatality with this fire department. The oldest fire department in the state, too. Today, he lost 19. The community lost 19. In a small town like this, you feel it. Two of the hotshots used to be waiters at El Charo Restaurant on Montezuma Street. Tonight, owner Amanda Cordoba Denny read me part of John Person's resignation letter. He gave me a chance and trusted me when most people didn't. I love you with all my heart. All day long at the memorial, people paid their respects. Our hearts go out to the families. And it's just, it's just tough. You see these guys every day. And uh, I want the community, I want these guys to know their families. We support them. Well, everybody knows somebody that was lost. My condolences. Tonight, as the Arizona Diamondbacks played the New York Mets, a jersey hung over the dugout, number 19, with the last name Yarnell. Here in Prescott, at the first of several memorial services, grown men wept for their fallen friends. No, the 4th of July won't be the same this year. The fireworks this year, a reminder of a much more immediate sacrifice. One that at this moment is almost too painful to bear. I'm David Wright for Nightline in Prescott, Arizona.